Hey guys, welcome back to Tira Gitana. My name is Abby, and today we're going to be doing the sacral textual uh, weekly tarot pull for the week of the September 17th to September 24th. And this is going to be a very interesting reading because this is the last week of Virgo season. Next week, at the right at the beginning of the week, it's going to be a very very powerful week to say the least um, because we have so much stuff coming up um, when it comes to the beginning of Libra season and I say this because it starts off with the sun moving into Libra and a full moon in Aries and so it's like literally cardinal energy in your face um, right now, currently, the moon's in Capricorn, so we are working with cardinal energy, but there's, like, a lot, pretty much everything is in Earth. Earth, water, and Mars is still in Aquarius, so air. Just a tad bit of air. Just a little bit of, a little bit of oxygen. Um, but I think that this week is literally the wrap-up before the storm that will be coming through. In the next couple of weeks <laughs> so oh okay this is just for the week 17 to the 24th um the interesting is that I, the, the interesting thing about it is is that i feel like it is going to be a resetting of a lot of things um there's a lot of stuff that's like coming into play now um Especially with this um, full moon in Aries because it's going to emotionally reset uh, and push what Libra season. It's pretty much set the tone. So this is the last week to really like, like if you haven't been doing the healing work and you haven't been um, putting in the focus for like things that you've just been trying to heal, um, working with your mind, setting healthy boundaries, setting um, healthier intentions for your body, for yourself, for your spirit, then you are going to be feeling a lot of things next week. Um, let's not forget that, what is it? Uh, I want to say three weeks from now, moon, well, I mean, the moon is, our, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Venus will be retrograding in Scorpio. It's going to start its retrograde on the 8th, if I'm not mistaken. And, but it's already, Venus is already in Scorpio. So we're, we're coming into a lot of Venus energy, but also a lot of Scorpio energy. Because I feel like Scorpio is going to be dominating the under, um, the underlining of the whole entire season for Libra. It's really going to be the, the lurking, the lurking on, of the thing. So it was actually something I said a couple of weeks ago. Well, actually, when the moon had gone into I'm gonna pull one more card and then we're gonna talk about the cards um when the moon went into when Venus originally went into Scorpio one of the things I said to my Libra friends was that I told them I was like you know Libra season is the love before the storm because once you get into Scorpio season it's nothing like it's nothing 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 like um Libra season at all it's not about you know balance necessarily it's not about like those kind of undertones of Venus vibes and enjoying yourself and all this stuff it's not about that it's like very very dark work um the under the bottom of the deck is strength and the king of wands <laughs> because we we know it's coming we we know this Aries moon is coming so let's just talk about it this week is literally like the wrap up, is a wrap up of intentions, is literally the wrap up from what intention you set on the new moon in Virgo and how um, we're pushing through to use the, the Libra energy in Libra season, how we're going to start off that season. Um, it's literally like perfect timing and I feel like there's going to be a lot of tension. There's going to be a lot of stuff coming out for people. Um, while I was talking to some of my friends and even for myself as well <laughs> this happened but there's a lot of relationships ending right now which I, I i i spoke about 
in the past couple of readings I've been kind of warning you guys about this like if there's something that's not genuinely truthful um, if there's something that's not for you if it's if it's just not the truth of you it's gonna get taken away we've been talking about this I think I've been talking about this since the summertime <laughs> I've just been like listen if y'all don't do the work once Scorpio season comes we're all gonna get smoked <laughs> I've been talking about this, so don't say I didn't warn, warn you, but a lot of that, it's coming up for people. I, I, a lot of my friends have ended their relationships with their partners, and um, a lot of people, a lot of friends are, like, not being friends anymore. Um, a lot of people are discovering truths about people, truths about themselves. A lot of people are hearing um, voices. A lot of people are um, seeing dead people. A lot of like, literally, the death energy is very much at the forefront wherever you are in your spiritual journey will tell you um and in your life's journey will tell you how much and where the areas uh where you're going to be affected um by all of these movements because again with venus and scorpio and jupiter and scorpio it's literally like finding abundance in the darkness that's literally what it is we have to put ourselves in the situation that we're allowing ourselves to go as deep as we need to go in order for us to come out lighter and freer and more alive because right now it's about this is just like the prerequisite to the to the heaviness and everything that we're gonna have all the work that we're gonna have to do throughout the rest of the season and this is not to scare you because I don't I don't ever look at astrology as like trying to put fear into people or anything like that um but if you would were to ask me out of all like the signs which one are you most like you know it, it it would be scorpio because that's the one that will automatically drag you like it does not care about what you want to do it's <laughs> it's just like listen it, li it lives in a darker area is the darkest point of the chart is the di darkest area of the chart it needs to there needs to be a sign that will take you that deep and still survive and still transform into something else and there needs to be a sign that takes all of us there and so it can be all fluffy and light all the time it can be all love and light all the time it needs to be shadow work it needs to be a lot of death work it needs to be like cleansing your aura cleansing yourself and this is why virgo season is very important because you focus on your healing and then if you d during virgo season but then if you don't actually focus on it and you just goddamn well ignore it the whole time what ends up happening is by the time you get to libra season you're thinking you're enjoying yourself and you're just gonna not give a fuck and stay unbalanced by the time you get into scorpio season you're gonna get just straight up checked because you're going to feel the weight of it it's going to f you're gonna feel it in your body you're gonna feel it in your spirit you're gonna feel it emotionally it's just gonna be heavy and so all transformations that like will occur within the next few months or are going to be to make us lighter are going to be f for the betterment of ourselves and it's a lot of stuff happening i'm just like okay we're gonna talk about it so the first card out the first two cards are uh, the mirror, which in um, this deck is called the mirror, but it's uh, the wheel of fortune, and the page of swords. Those are the first two cards out. So, movement and kind of fresh mental energy, and this is important because this is kind of also that mercurial Virgo energy, and this is important to start off the week this way. This is very important to start off the week this way. Um, understanding, like the genuine our genuine thoughts not not necessarily being aggressive in conversation not necessarily um thinking that being stubborn in thought and being stubborn in conversations but being open to movement and change right now being open to the mutable energy that is that virgo mercurial energy and kind of allowing ourselves to be open to what's coming because the wheel is moving anyway and it will be so we can see ourselves in a different place. That's definitely coming. The next two cards are the Fool and the Eight of Cups. And like I said, there's a lot of people breaking up with people right now. There's a lot, I don't mean to laugh because I know it's a very serious thing, but there is a lightness that comes from it. There's definitely a, a lightness, and I say this because of this. The next two cards are the Ten of Wands and the six of cups and there's a lightness that comes from this because you can either struggle or you can have a really great relationship it's just it's really as simple as that it can either be uh, a blessing or it can be a curse and so deciding 
those two things like wh where does it fall it's very important for for you to leave virgo season being clear on it being clear on this fresh energy that's coming in and like this movement that we're doing with ourselves um it's super super important for us to kind of really because this is this is heading into aries energy this full card this like starting off again emotionally it's i'm not saying that full moon's not gonna necessarily feel really fun this it's gonna um be doing a lot planetary speaking it's gonna be doing a lot but for the most part it's still an important thing to do we need to stop struggling so much in things that are not meant for us and just allow ourselves to kind of just be still be open be flowy like flow into the conversation there will be conversations that will be happening this week um that are gonna really kind of start moving things forward and then you're gonna start kind of seeing how things play out and you're gonna see kind of it's like a story this this whole thing is like a whole entire story you're gonna kind of see how one thing that happened now is gonna how that's gonna kind of play into later um the next two cards are the page of uh, of cups in reverse and the three of swords in reverse fun stuff i mean i will say this as far as this being the last two cards um obviously because we have a full moon in aries that means that this weekend the moon will be in pisces um which means that this is actually really good um even though the page of cups is in reverse um we might be o a little bit overwhelmed emotionally speaking but we also might have healed mentally a lot of the wounds that we've been carrying um for a while that have been blocking our sacral space so there is there, there's still like a really nice healing aspect to all of this um because there's a different there's a different thing now there's a different intention now the six of cups is like a very genuine kind of again is a very light uh innocent kind of new fresh kind of energy coming in and, and and it's leading into that aries energy but it's before this week is up we have to we're ending we're ending the last moon of this basically is in a mutable moon which is pisces right so this week we're in a mutable sign a sun sign which is virgo we're ending the season in a mutable sign which is pisces so definitely enjoy this weekend if you if you're going out or doing anything um enjoy this weekend don't be too much in your head um that's kind of hard to say considering it's pisces and virgo energy i know but i mean we do have a lot of earth energy in the chart literally groundedness as fuck um as could ever be but for the most part let yourself be free a little bit let yourself enjoy there 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 is no need to struggle now there is no need to to do the struggling we already kind of if you haven't already kind of let go of what needed to be let go that you knew that needed to be let go but you hadn't been letting it go but you knew that it was gonna get to the point that you had to let it go just let it go just let it go let it go so you don't have to carry that into next week um and so this card the three of swords is not like this it's not like upright let it go so you can be a little bit more fresh however i feel like this is gonna be this kind of fresh energy is gonna be throughout the week you're gonna feel th this every single moon that comes uh, that comes up up until this full moon it's like the prereq you're gonna feel the shift you, you're gonna feel this push for this like Oh, I need something new. Let me just I want to start something. New. I want to do something new. I want to there's something new about about this this energy. There's a shift happening. Um and that's why we're starting off the week strong with the wheel of fortune. Um it's important to just kind of flow right now. Just flow. Just flow. Don't struggle. Don't think too hard. <laughs> so hard for me to say that so hard for me to say that but don't think too hard um just just flow just flow also would we'll definitely recommend looking at your transits for the week um and looking at your transits for next week as well um but just set the intention for some good things set the intention for some good things don't don't over don't drown yourself 
for anything right now. It's it's not the way it's supposed to be. Um, there's just a flowingness about it. Being in the ocean before you get thrown into the fire. <laughs> That's this weekend. That's what this weekend's gonna feel like. <laughs> That's literally what this weekend's gonna feel like. But right now, healing our sacral space comes from letting things flow. Um, and releasing what needs to be released. Uh, so what else, what, what, what do you feel like you need to detach yourself from? What area of your life is really calling you, calling your attention, calling your spirit? Um, what are you curious about? What do you want to play with? What, what is it that you, that you gravitated towards for right now? Like, flow to that. Don't like rush into it. This is not the Aries moon yet. Like, we don't need to run. And right now the moon's in Capricorn. And Capricorn doesn't run before it plans. So, you know, like, plan it out. Like, what, what is it that you want to do? What is it that you want to focus on? There's so much earth energy right now. This is like the most perfect time to do something super earthy. Uh, whether or not it's like being by just going to the park and being by the water or looking at the stars at night whatever it is whatever it is it's it's super important to just like allow yourself to do it allow yourself to connect to whatever it is is calling you right now because the healing is going to come from that and you see with venus and scorpio because again, I'm, I'm going to keep saying this, this is this whole series has been a sacral series, right? We're doing sacral healing videos. And the reason why we're doing sacral healing videos is because we manifest in, from our sacral space. And the easiest representation of me explaining this is that the way it, we manifest from our sacral space is look at just plain, point blank and simply women and, child, and, and, and childbirth. We literally manifest from our sacral space literally like this is a physical thing that can also happen but also with everything else we manifest from here so we need to have that space clear and so if if what's been uh, so with venus now in scorpio scorpio ruling the sacral space and jupiter our, who has been in Scorpio all year, making us focus a lot on our sacral space and all sacral issues and sex and um, really the darker aspects of ourselves. How do you flow with that kind of energy, right? Well, allow yourself to address the darker parts of you. If you need to go be... If, if the way the Fool and the Eight of Cups is coming up for you is that you need to go, like for this week go be a hermit like what the hermits do what virgos do because that is a card of virgo um and, and you need to kind of just go be with your darker self and really reflect on those things about yourself then go do that if the way you need to address it like if again if you if you need to let scorpio season drag you um and these scorpio chances drag you in order for you to heal the spaces that you need to heal, then you need to do it. It's, it's, this is not, it doesn't have to be super complicated. It really, it doesn't have to be super hard, complicated. It just needs to be an openness. There needs to be there needs to be a release and you need to find, flow your way into that release. You need to flow into it. You need to figure out why you need you need everything needed to happen that certain way you need to look at you need to see the synchronicities after the fact you need to allow yourself to go on this journey so then you can heal and be healed from it and this week is really it's a great week to just be like okay we started over it's it's good i'm good you're good we're all good let's just be good let's just be let's just be good bottom of the deck is the king of cups and the ten of swords Let's just be good. Let's, let's. Can we just be good? Can we, Okay. We can try. We can try to be good. Okay. So the first two cards are Judgment and the Knight of Cups. We're going to be talking about Scorpio a lot. We're going to be talking about Scorpio a lot. Um, flow. I don't know how many times I'm going to need to state that, but I feel like that's the that's the word of this week, flow. Just flow with it. Flow 
with your emotions flow with where your emotions are taking you flow to where your shadow self is taking you if you are because not everybody's going to be doing the same thing there's people who are going to be mostly working on the physical realm some people will be working on the spiritual realm um and i am going to be making um throughout the next couple of weeks throughout the next the season i will be making um ancestral videos and like how to work with your ancestors because it has come to me that <laughs> i need to teach how people how to kind of work with your ancestors in different ways so we're going to be talking about that because that's also going to get highlighted with scorpio season and these scorpio transits themselves um as far as healing goes so um there look out for the videos that are coming up on that but there is a flow that needs to come from it wherever it is that life is taking you wherever it is that these transits are shining their light on you there needs to be a flow that comes with it even with communications with who we're communicating with how we're how much pressure we usually would have put on a situation how much pressure we would put on our emotions on on other people to act on something um we need to be and this is kind of going to be hard to say because i mean mercury is still in virgo and we're still in virgo season but we need to flow we need to start allowing ourselves to flow instead of being um kind of taking people apart and taking situations apart completely we just need to be able to sync up with our emotions before we could just completely take over our mind um and let ourselves be taken over by our minds because it's it's so needed this week it's so needed this week to start kind of prepping for that balance of the mind of the heart with with libra season coming in it's all about balance and in, it's going to require both of those things not just one not just focusing on the mind not just focusing on the, the heart but both there needs to be a balance of both um and in order for us to do that this week we need to make sure that we're allowing ourselves to not just be in the mind in about communication in you know it, like when we go to this cave we need to make sure that we're focusing on emotions we need to make sure that we're we're giving like time for us to address how we're feeling what's coming up for us our reactions to other people um, how others are showing up for us as well why they're showing up the way they're showing up um there's like a lot of stuff coming up this week especially with the moon and the star card it's funny that these two came up backwards because the moon card came out before the star card came out and i think there's an aspect of this where we can kind of feel the way the ocean is kind of playing and this has to do go goes hand in hand with this card which is the page of cups and it goes hand in hand with that ocean energy and that let's just kind of flow energy and that water energy and the lightness of it but then the star card coming out right behind the moon card even though that's not necessarily the order astrologically speaking it's kind of, th there might be something that you notice this week, especially towards the end of the week. Well, you, you'll you see how the actions of one leads to another. Because the star card is also a very, it's like the, scar the card of destiny. And this is Pisces and this is also Aquarius. It's also the card of destiny. The card of kind of paying attention to how it all ties together. How where the water falls and from and from where it's leading to like where the water is leading to there's like a bigger picture at play and that might come that might be something that we realize during the pisces full moon towards the end of the week as we're coming up on the aries i mean th did i just say pisces full moon towards the aries new moon the next two cards are the lovers and the page of wands so really <laughs> I'm 
This is so interesting. Like the way it's coming up is so interesting because I always like I go through these readings and I see how it's coming up for me. But then anytime I talk to anybody else who watches these videos is always like their own interpretation and it's just really cool. Um, but with the lovers and the page of wands leading up to because let's not forget this page of wands is coming. This is that Aries full moon energy. Um, leading up to how 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 we've gotten through this journey that's three major arcanas back to back how we've gotten through this journey how it all comes into play how it's changed us what we learned from it how we're fueled by it how it makes us better with the king of pentacles and then the last two cards are temp temperance in reverse and the knight of swords so how it's made us better how it's made us stronger how it made us value ourselves more how it's made us think about things in a different perspective um how how it taught us about balance and rushing this is so much Aries energy I'm telling you this is gonna be next week um what 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 it has taught us and how are we going to kind of set the tone for next week next week is a whole different playing field next week we're starting to head into this energy which is that like even though this is a Gemini card, the lover's energy is very much Libra energy. It's same. Say, I'll say the same thing about temperance because this, there's a duality that comes with this card because they're a mutable sign and they're a Ge Gemini's dual sign. But temperance as well, there's a balancing that comes from this card. And so there's... Same with the star. Same with... There's a balancing that needs to kind of be had and we're going into there's like it's, it's just creeping in slowly the balance the, the focus on the balance is creeping in slowly the reminder that there needs to be balance is creeping in slowly um and then the focus shifting into reminding you of the water reminding you of water because in all of these even though aquarius is an air sign it in pretty much every tarot that will have the star card you will see water and water being a focus because as much very as much as Aquarius is an air sign it's still very emotional even though it can be very detached um, same with temperance there is like a water element to their cards and there's a there's a, a balancing to their cards there's a need to kind of focus on their nature same way as the way Capricorn comes up is very different in tarot than the way um, you you could you would think of a capricorn as a person but there's there's a different part of their nature that requires this balance and it's it's the way it's the way it kind of plays out because with aquarius the way they seek balance is by paying attention pulling themselves out of of the Of the situation to see things in a bigger picture that's one of the things that they do best they're they're able to kind of say oh wow um this is how this connects to this but this could have been better this way and this could have been done better if we'd have done this or like why are they doing this this way when it could totally work better this way there's a kind of futuristic thing a futuristic thing about aquarius that they do with this they're able to pull themselves out of situations in order to see better but that is how they see the balance because they're able to pull themselves out some people can just live in in all the time and that's like that pisces you could they can live and swim in their ocean all the time but they can't pull themselves out of it aquarius can pull themselves out of it um and there's a need to pull themselves out of it um same thing with sagittarius sagittarius will be you know like They'll, they'll be in one country one day and in the country the other day but the, th the thing about Aquarius is that the way they balance their, themselves is by continuing to search continuing to expand their mind continuing to um, expand themselves in whatever way they 
seem and they deem um, valuable to them. So it's important for them to do this. It's important for them to balance themselves out and it's not always going to be in the way that um, society says you should seek balance or anybody tells you you should seek balance. Sometimes the way you need balance is it's in the most unexpected ways. It's some it's like a customized type of balance. It's not just black and white. Balance is not black and white and it's not going to be black and white. It's going to be a little bit complicated and it'll require um that fuel and that va like seeking that fuel and the value and your emotional state to be in balance in whatever way that manifests for you is the focus for this week. It's definitely the focus of this week before we get into next week and then it's kind of a getting electrocuted it's what I'm gonna call it <laughs> because that's what it's, I feel like that's what's gonna feel like um, so definitely focus on your emotions focus on your thoughts focus on your mind focus on how things are coming up for you focus on the bigger picture really take yourself out and think about it We've been talking about Capricorn for a while. One of the things that I told you guys Capricorns do really well is that we can see lessons and everything. So really pull yourselves out and look at what the lesson was. Look at what the lesson was. Look at why you had to learn that thing. Um, look at why it was important for you to s step out of it. Um, and then start planning your intentions as well. Start planning your intentions for next week. Start planning your um, your goals. Write down what's important, what you think is important, where you want to move. Really focus on where you're flowing to. Because that has been the word of the day flow so this week is about flowing that's fun i mean i think this week should be relative, relatively good um personally um this week seems like it's gonna be a good week but i have been feeling like that flow energy for a while god jesus christ okay okay and then I'll pull one more. And then we'll talk about the Oracle cards real quick. Ah, interesting. So, first card out is the moon. And the second card out is Sagittarius. We just talked about Sagittarius, which is interesting. And we just, we just moved from the Sagittarius moon, which is also interesting. Um, but the moon is also, like, it's Cancer energy, but... In tarot it's Pisces energy um, so again flow like the moon controls the, the wave the, the tides um, flow flow with your emotions that's it really I feel like this card is probably the strongest card this week um, just because this is the message of the week there is a flow that needs to come from this there's a kind of just like a piece and just like water energy just flow flow especially because the moon will be building up into pisces before it hits aries so it's just very very heavy water energy um but really soft at the same time so just flow with the energy um with sagittarius again like i said there is a balance that comes from it there and the way you seek balance might not be the same way because the next card is Jupiter and we all know Jupiter rules Sagittarius so there's just a lot of energy um the way Sagittarius seeks balance is not the same way everybody else seeks balance that's not their nature every every sign's nature is different and the way they they balance out is different so seek balance in the way that feels comfortable for you and it needs to be customizable for you next two cards out is Earth and Taurus Venus vibes so definitely pay attention to your Uranus transits this week <laughs> and next week. This is very important. This is very, very important. Uranus has been doing some stuff 
for the last two weeks um so pay attention to your transits i would definitely check them out but enjoy the flow don't forget about the earth i did talk about connecting back and just spending time outside because it's very important this week to just be by water connect to the earth and flow there's a lot of grounding energy there's a lot of earth energy it's like what five six planets are in earth signs right now flow <laughs> literally the word that just keeps coming to my head anyway i will see you guys next week all my links and stuff will be down below um let me know if you have any questions and stuff and yeah i will see you guys next week